Welcome to ECE 203 DC or direct current circuits. This is your study guide and this is what we will use each day in class. It's a partial set of lecture notes as well as a guide to help you to study for the topics that we are going to cover in this course. This is a 10 week course with three units. The first unit is a review of some things you learned in physics. So it's a physics foundation, circuit elements, KVL and KCL. Unit two is analysis techniques such as mesh current method, node voltage method, Thevenin and Norton equivalents. And the third unit is operational amplifiers and two ports. There are several ways to study for exams in this course, course including looking at the study guide, looking at homework, looking at quizzes, etc. But one great technique to use is to also review a concept map. A concept map makes connections between the topics covered in the course and by reviewing a concept map and making sure you understand each concept as well as the connections between them, it ensures that you are properly prepared for the exam. Here's an example of a concept map for the physics foundation. So we obviously start with the introduction to electrical systems, which is what we're doing right now. And then we talk about some basic concepts related to electricity including ideal circuit elements such as resistors or inductors or capacitors, um, charge, Q or energy, W, which has units of joules, and the law of conservation of energy. Based upon charge, we know that charge that flows is called current, the separation of charge is voltage, and energy per unit charge is also called voltage. And we verify the law of conservation of energy by using power, and power has units of watts, and in this class, we do everything according to the passive sign convention. Some of you may have seen the passive or active sign convention in your physics courses. The other concepts we study are voltage rises and voltage drops, as well as power delivered and power absorbed, which are used to confirm the law of conservation of energy. We also go into more detail about circuit elements because you can have passive or active circuit elements. Passive circuit elements are resistors, inductors, or capacitors. Active circuit elements would be electric sources, as well as an operational amplifier. For resistors, we talk about Ohm's law, V equals I times R, but we can also talk about voltage or current for capacitors and inductors, where the voltage for an inductor is L dI dt, the current through a capacitor is I equals C dV dt. For active sources, you can have independent or dependent sources, where independent sources produce a constant current based upon a constant applied voltage. And you can have an ideal current source that a produces the constant current, or an ideal voltage source which produces a constant voltage. Dependent sources, which are represented by a diamond, there are four types. There's a current controlled current source, voltage controlled voltage source, voltage controlled current source, and current controlled current source. All of these elements depend upon the voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit. We will talk about this more in detail in the lecture. With respect to analysis techniques, a big part of DC circuits is based upon Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, and Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. But in order to do these, these, we verify them by using the law of conservation of energy. And basically it states that the sum of the voltages around the loop is equal to zero, or the sum of the currents into and out of a node is equal to zero. Some of the other analysis techniques we use are Ohm's law, superposition, source transformations, and a circuit reduction technique such as combining resistors in parallel or series, or by using Y delta transformations in order to simplify the circuit for analysis. We also look at one port and two port circuits. Examples of one port circuits would be Thevenin and Norton equivalents, and we use those algorithms in order to find maximum power transfer. Building upon KVL and KCL, we have the current divider, the voltage divider, the node voltage method, the mesh current method as well. Unit 3 will have operational amplifiers in two ports. As I stated earlier, an operational amplifier is an active circuit element. And we analyze it by using the virtual short condition and the infinite input impedance condition. Using these two conditions as well as KCL, it is possible to analyze any ideal operational amplifier. But in this class, we, po we focus particularly on inverting, non-inverting, summing, and difference amplifiers. Finally, two ports. As we discussed before, one ports are used, Thevenin and Norton equivalent, in order to simplify a circuit when you're most interested in the port characteristics such as voltage, current, or power. 
but you also can have two port circuits where you're looking at both ports, input and output, and you want to design the circuit in order to identify the parameters or to look for certain things such as voltage gain, current gain, or power. And when we talk about two port circuits, we will look at terminated two port circuits as well as cascaded two port circuits in order to determine some of these qualities. Lecture 1-1 is a circuit analysis overview and you should be reading sections 1.1 through 1.3 as your textbook in order to learn more about this topic. The objectives of today's lecture are to be able to briefly and clearly explain static electricity and electric circuits and to be able to use SI units and standard prefixes for powers of 10. These will be the main topics covered on your first quiz which is a physics foundation review quiz of things that you should have learned in a prerequisite course for this one. First, the definition of an electric circuit. An electric circuit is a mathematical model that approximates the behavior of an actual circuit system. An example of an electric circuit system is one that everyone sees, which is a typical household light switch, which basically when you turn on the switch, the light turns on, but somewhere there has to be power in order to have current flow from the switch to the light bulb or the light to turn it on. In this class, we don't actually draw these realistic looking diagrams, but we draw a circuit model. So a circuit model would look like we have here. You would have a battery symbol represented by a circle with a plus and a minus, representing that the current flows from negative to positive through the switch, which is a break in a circuit, so that when you close it, you have a closed loop for the circuit to flow, and then we would rep the current to flow, and then we would represent the resistor as your light bulb. And then obviously you have to have a ground, so that the current flows from higher potential to lower potential through the light bulb. A commonly used mathematical model for the electric system is a circuit model that I just showed you. But in order to use the circuit model, we have to become familiar with some common elements that are used for circuit models, including one I just showed you, which is a DC battery source here, or we call it a voltage source. One other common device we have is a current source and you know it's a current source because we always show the arrow instead of the plus and the minus and then we also just saw in that circuit model a resistor and here we have the ground or the common and sometimes we show just a triangle to represent ground or we show the three hashes for ground this here is a capacitor. Here we have an inductor, a diode, and an operational amplifier. We will learn more about some of these devices as the quarter progresses. Circuit analysis are the tools used to apply to an electric circle, circuit by using mathematical techniques to predict the behavior of the circuit model and its ideal circuit components. The physical prototype is an actual electric system constructed from actual electric components such as the battery, the light switch, and the bulb that I showed in the prior image. Now we're going to take a break from the lecture and watch a video. Some things to think about as we're viewing the video is what is the source, what is the resistance, what is the switch, and why do you think that Jimmy Kimmel in the video had to jump in the order in order to shock people thinking about the flow of electricity and current? Oh, what is it? Ow! 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 It hurts every time. If I grab his hand, what would happen? Don't start it out. Stop. Stop. So in this video, the Van de Graaff generator is actually our electric source. And if you think about it, it has a positive charge on it. So the man touching the Van de Graaff generator, he is the source for Jimmy. Because now what happens is his hair is sticking up. Why do you think his hair is sticking up? Because let's assume that his hair is also positively charged. His hair is sticking up because he now has a positive charge from touching the Van de Graaff generator. And so his hair is trying to get as far as possible away from the positive charge because opposite charges attract. So here we have Jimmy standing on the floor. 
Now charge wants to flow from a higher potential to a lower potential through the path of least resistance. So if you think about that Jimmy has a very low resistance, when him and the man become close to each other, that charge wants to jump from Jimmy to something that, from the man to Jimmy, which has a lower resistance, and this is how static electricity works when you walk through a carpet in the winter with wool socks on. So it creates this spark, and it's the shock that Jimmy gets every time their hands get close to each other, where Jimmy is grounded. Now he wants to shock someone else, and so he tries unsuccessfully to touch a little boy as well as a woman who were also grounded around him, and he was not able to shock them until he then jumps up off the floor. Now the question is, why once he jumped up off the floor was he actually able to shock them? Well, the reason is now they are not both grounded, so they're not at the same potential. And so now he's positively charged and she's negatively charged, which creates the shock. Another way that we describe electric circuits is to use the water analogy. So if you think about water, water must flow through a pipe. I use this a lot when I'm helping students in lab because they will forget to put the ammeter, which measures current, in the flow of the current in series in the circuit. So if you think about water has to flow through the pipe, if the pipe is broken or open, water cannot flow. It will spill out and go to the floor. So here, the reservoir represents our ground in the circuit and the pump rec represents the source that causes the water to flow, or think about it as a battery or voltage sources, source which causes the current to flow. So then we have a charge flow rate or a volume flow rate, and then when you have a constriction in the pipe, or that's where you are going to limit the amount of water that can flow because of the constriction. This is our parallel to resistance because a resistor restricts the flow of current. And the relationship between this for the water analogy is Poussel's law, whereas that's Ohm's law, I equals delta V over R. So here we have the current flowing from higher potential to lower potential, going through a resistor, which is their resistance, back to ground. Way to think about it is a large pipe has very little resistance to flow, kind of like a small resistor has very little resistance to charge flow. The last thing to review to end out today's lecture in your textbook is there are several tables that summarize SI units as well as standard prefixes for powers of 10. Your first quiz will have questions about this on it, so it is very important that you review those basic tables in chapter one of your text before taking the quiz. Examples of SI units would be, what are the units for current? What are the units for voltage? What are the units for charge, energy, and power? What are the units for resistance? What are the units for capacitance and inductance? We use standard prefixes extensively in this course, and in fact, if you don't use standard prefixes, you will be, points will be deducted on your quizzes and exams. And what I mean by that is in this class, we don't write 0.001 amps. We would say that we have a one milliamp current. And we also don't write 10,000 volts. We would write 10 kilovolts. Or if we have 0.000023 joules, we would say that that is 23 microjoules. Please get in the habit of always using standard prefixes of powers of 10 in this course, as opposed to writing out a stream of zeros or writing something in scientific notation. In this class, we use engineering notation. I recommend that you also set your calculator to engineering notation to help you when expressing values that are particularly large or small in this form. And this concludes lecture 1-1 of DC Circuits. Mm -hmm.